So a question about crash test dummies then, and really it's about Newton's second law. Uh, Newton's second law is in the equation sheet, it's that a force is a mass times an acceleration. And uh, the question asks you to fill in the missing data, so calculate the stopping force here in, in a crash without a seatbelt and then to discuss how the seatbelt actually limits the chance of injury. So hopefully now that I've identified the equation for you, you could see that you can actually, I know it's a deceleration, but it's still a rate of change of speed, so it still works in here. The mass is the mass of the crash test dummy, so his stopping force is going to be 60 times 467 meters per second squared. Two eight zero two oh. Pretty much twenty eight thousand newtons. If you've just done the calculation and done it correctly, you get a level one answer. And also, if you've been able to say just in words, well, deceleration is uh, higher for the crash out of the seatbelt, so that's a higher force. Then you would still have got that level one answer maybe one mark instead of two for the calculation but it did say do the calculation so level two you had to actually do the calculation and explain it the the chain the difference in force more force for crash without seatbelt than with a seatbelt um, in terms of the deceleration difference in deceleration or the difference in stopping time or the difference in distance so really you know i think that that's pretty simple okay now to get the really higher marks, you need to link this or this with the deceleration and then subsequently with the force as well. So basically, both crash test dummies are changing speed from a high velocity to a low velocity. Now, if that happens in a, a long time or over a long distance, it is going to be a smaller acceleration, a smaller deceleration. So this is a short time, so all that speed is coming off very, very rapidly. So actually, that is a very high force, and they're the types of things you have to talk about. Now, the people who misunderstood this really thought that actually a seatbelt stops you faster, and they really felt, okay, the seatbelt stops you traveling as far. And actually, you can see here, now actually, that you travel further whilst stopping with the seatbelt on. So actually your stopping happens over a larger distance and that's really important. So that energy is dissipated over a larger distance. Uh, it's the same idea as a crash helmet or a crumple zone. Basically the whole crash, all the kinetic energy is being dissipated over a longer time or a larger distance. And therefore you're getting lower force, you're getting less chance of injury. Now I'll just say briefly because you could answer this in terms of Newton's second law being a force equal to a change in momentum divided by time. But the same is true. The larger the time is, the smaller the force will be. And that's a really both of these things. Longer time, smaller force. Without the seatbelt, you carry on at the same speed until you hit the windshield. And actually, rather than the seatbelt slowing you down over this distance, the windshield slows you down over a much shorter distance. Rather, it taking a long time to slow you down, the windshield slows you down in a very short time.